Hello there Aquarius. Welcome to your April 2018 tarot reading. So uh, my apologies for not being able to connect with you guys, um, I believe, yeah, in, in the month of March. So I am sincerely sorry. Things are a little bit more stable now, so I'm hoping to be a lot more consistent with the readings, okay? Um, let's just go into your reading for this month. The way this is going to work is I have a new format. I'm doing the um, 12th house natal astrology spread. So there's a card for each house. Uh, each It represents different sectors of your life. Um, I'm choosing not to show the cards mainly because I want this to be an audio uh, file. When I do the audio file, I'm less distracted. There's less, you know, stimulation and I'm able to actually get more messages. And the messages are a lot more coherent, I feel. They, um, they're, they're not disjointed and choppy and they actually incorporate and blend into each other. So I like the method a little bit more and it's actually a lot easier for me to do the re uh, recording if it's just an audio file okay so i'm going to use this method for this month it might change in the future who knows but um let me just talk first of all uh, about a few things and then i'm going to pull out four major messages for you guys for this month in this spread and then i'll uh, try to unpack these messages so we're going to go over each of these messages one by one um, the first thing that I want to mention, though, is we are in a Mercury retrograde um, cycle. And uh, I feel, though, that, you know, uh, aside from being careful on a day-to-day -day basis, don't forget your keys, um, tr be careful when you're driving, uh, don't get distracted, you know, listening to loud music or watching TV or texting while you're driving, um, being careful about traffic and, you know, leaving... Um, for work on time aside from those bookkeeping you know standard mercury retrograde things i actually feel mercury retrograde uh, cycles are actually really beneficial for you guys and the reason i say that is um you have a tremendous amount of mental energy so even when you guys are asleep your mind is so energetically active okay and then when you're going through the day your mind is constantly turning it's uh, running a mile a minute. So you're always thinking about things. You're always recalling information. You're always retrieving insights. Your mind is never ever rested. And so it's almost like, you know, um, constantly being on the go, like you're go, go, go. And your mind is just overactive. And then you find yourselves at the end of the day, you're physically tired but you hop into bed and you find yourself not able to sleep because your mind is so high strung and it's so overactive that it's hard for you to calm your mind enough to get restful sleep. And so the Mercury's uh, retrograde cycle is actually really beneficial because it is helping you reset. It's helping you arrive at really powerful epiphanies and insights. And it's... Um, it's almost like the rest of the time you're constantly thinking and thinking and thinking and during the mercury cycle it slows down a little bit your thinking your mental processes slows down a little bit so you kind of start to get other insights you start to feel the emotions you start to see things in a different way so it's kind of like things slow down a little bit and you're able to absorb more information but the information is not just technical information, it's a lot more intuitive information. And I feel what's happening is a lot of you kind of have this out of body experience where you're seeing yourself outside of yourself. And what exactly does that mean? I feel like you're seeing yourself the way that other people see you. You're able to see yourself through other people's eyes. You're able to think very, um, clearly about you know why am i saying this to this person why does this person uh tick me off why do they rub me the wrong way why do i dislike this person so you're starting to process things in a different way in a more intuitive way and then you're also starting to kind of figure out why do i like this person why does their um you know why does their opinion matter to me 
So you're able to see yourself from outside of yourself and you're able to understand your interactions with other people. You're also able to see as well operate, I feel, on a higher vibration where things start to click, things start to make sense. And it, it, it makes sense and it clicks in a more intuitive way. So in a way, it's kind of like allowing you to recharge your batteries, recharge your mental energy or your mental capacity a little bit because you're operating in a different way. You're operating in a more intuitive way. And so I feel like whenever there is a Mercury retrograde cycle, you start to arrive at insights, you start to arrive at information or ideas, and it's very mind-blowing. It can be a very uh, surreal experience because you're going to get insights that are really helpful. You're going to get a lot of ideas that, um, that are kind of mind-blowing, okay? So keep a journal handy write down these ideas when they come to you they're going to come to you out of the blue and you're going to be like i wish i'd known that or i wish i'd done that or i wish you know i'd run with that so keep a journal nearby um keep voice recorder on your phone would also work jot down these ideas jot down these insights because i feel like they're going to be really helpful for you okay so that's the first thing that i want to get out of the way and let me talk about the four messages that i have for you the first one here is they're saying, is it all it's cracked up to be? And I feel like this is coming in in your career sector, work, career, um, jobs, overall in, in that, that sector. The second message here is my way or my way. So I feel like this is a mantra that you're going to be telling people this month. And um, it, it's, it's almost like, how can I help you? Oh, but my way or my way. So it's it's being diplomatic, but at the same time telling it, telling other people it is what it is. This is the way it is. And so I feel like that's not something that you're uh, comfortable doing. You know, you're you're you tend to cater to other people, and so this is something that you're. This is a sta a stance that you are going to have to take. For this month and it might rub people the wrong way but who cares this is the stance that you're going to need to take in order for you to get through this month the third message here is lightning rod lightning rod and i don't want you to be scared because um electricity is your element it's basically you're going to be in your element and you're going to be this lightning rod you're going to be kind of like the center of attention and so the way that you direct this communication or the way that you direct this attention on you matters a great deal. Okay, but you know how to manipulate lightning. You know how to manipulate electricity. So we're going to talk a little bit more about ways that we can try to divert or de-escalate tension. Okay, uh, the fourth message here. They say green-eyed devil, and um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So I don't want you to worry about these messages. I'm going to unpack them, okay? So let's talk about the first one, because they all lead to the last message. So we have to go through them in chronological order. So the first one is, is it all is cracked up to be? Um, first of all, let me talk about the work front. Um, financially, honestly, I feel like things are going really well for you guys. You definitely can curb your spending a little bit. Um, I don't see you going overboard. I don't see you being extra, you know, like super extravagant. But I definitely feel, you know, uh, curbing your expenditures, definitely, uh, it wouldn't hurt. And um, what I'm seeing here is because finances, it's going really well. I feel like many of you are in a situation where you know you're you're working and you're paying the bills like you're able to make ends meet you're able to take care of yourself and uh, it makes you feel good it makes you feel safe it makes you feel stable and you're proud of yourself uh, the method in which you work and the environment in which you work it's another story I feel there is going to be a changing of the guard so somebody is going to be leaving your work environment I feel more feminine energy 
like a, a female, a woman, somebody that has been there for some time. Um, I feel that there might be some harsh words exchanged between this female energy, this co-worker, or this boss or supervisor. I, I just feel like there's some, it's, it's like too much has been said. And then the person is going to be leaving, okay? And I feel like this is something that people anticipate, but they didn't think it would happen right now. And a lot of it has to do with this built up, this pent up energy of the Mercury retrograde, where things have been said in a harsh manner and too much has been said, too much has been revealed. So I feel somebody leaving in your work environment. Um, it creates a power vacuum, right? And so new people will come in. So they're saying here, changing of the guards. And I also feel as well, you're working in an environment where you're not really seeing eye to eye with your coworkers, okay? And we can't all, you know, be buddy buddy with our coworkers. It's very rare that that happens. But I also feel as well that um, the way that you work is not in accordance with your coworkers. I see you doing a lot of work. I see you like, you know, kind of like um, doing a lot doing a lot for the company, doing a lot for your co-workers, doing a lot for your supervisors. You're working your butt off. And I feel like other people, they don't have the same sense of urgency. They drag their feet. They don't know what they're doing. Um, they have other people do the work for them. They're just kind of um, lazy. And so... It feels very lonely carrying this load, this weight, and being the responsible one, and being the one that, you know, that lightning rod where if there's a problem, you're the one that has to do damage control, right? It's, it's very tiring and it feels very lonely, mainly because other people are not sharing or are not carrying their weight. And so they're urging you, you know, like, is it all it's cracked up to be? Is this the right job? Are you happy here? Are you happy doing that? Can you ease up a little bit and let other people kind of uh, do the damage control so that for once they know what it feels like? Um, I feel many of you need to pull back your energy and not play mother hen. Um, you have to let other people handle their own mess. You need to kind of like let things deteriorate so that people realize how bad it can get and then they start to shape up. If you're constantly going in and doing that damage control before things get really, 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 really bad, people only see you as the fixer and they see you nipping a problem in the bud so they don't really understand that Oh, it can get really bad. It can descend into chaos. It can get a lot worse. So I feel like some people here are, you know, coasting. They're taking advantage of the situation. They're taking you for granted. And so it's important to kind of, um, you know, you, you guys like to show how competent, how intelligent you are. You're very, it, it makes you feel proud. It makes you feel good to be deemed as competent and intelligent. That's what air signs live for. They don't want to be called, you know, beautiful or sexy or, you know, um, oh, you're such a good homemaker. They don't care about that. But you guys like to be praised for your capabilities, for being smart, for being intelligent, for being witty, for being fast, for getting things and understanding things in a quick manner, like that's the ultimate praise for you guys. And I feel like you do a lot to show people that you're really smart, that you're really, really capable. But more than anything, you have this strong sense of work ethics, especially a lot of Aquarius that I know. You have a really strong sense of work ethics. When you say you're gonna do something, you follow through. And I feel like in every work situation you find yourself in, you're entrusted with a lot more responsibilities. You're a lot faster than other people. You get your work done. And then you end up being the ones uh, that needs to train others. So already you're doing a lot of the work. And so my advice here is pull back your energy. Okay. Let other people start to step up and learn to uh, do damage control themselves. 
and then let other people kind of handle situations themselves that way they learn and it's also less of a burden on you so what it's really asking you is you know um, pull back your energy and yes you want to show that you can do the work but if it's not really a part of your job description or your responsibilities let other people handle it okay don't wear yourself out and especially in a situation where you're not getting the thanks and the recognition that you deserve all right um, I'm feeling here many of you are juggling multiple work options, multiple career choices as well. So you're going through a major period of like dilemma. Is this the right work for, for me? Is it all it's cracked up to be? Is this it? Am I on the right track? And I feel that you're definitely on the right track. You have some really solid skills that can be improved, that can be built upon. But I feel as if... I feel as if some of you work as if you're self-employed and that's not a bad thing at all but I feel like you're ungovernable so your supervisors the people that you're supposed to report to they're kind of um, they're, they feel like you're overstepping your boundaries they feel like you're making too many decisions without consulting them so they feel like you think you're self-employed and i feel like that rubs them the wrong way so be very very careful okay even if, if you know what you're doing coming to them and just say like um hey i'm doing this what do you think about it or even dumbing it down and just asking them what do you recommend that i do because i was thinking this I, I feel like doing that is like a, a social nicety. You do it so that they they can feel good, you know, can, they can feel good about that you're consulting them so that they don't feel like you're being obstinate or you're being too arrogant, okay? So you want to make sure you include other people in the decision-making process, even if you know exactly what you're you're supposed to be doing or exactly what the best course is. Um, but it's just nice to follow these procedures because you want to, you know, make uh, friends, not enemies. Okay. Does that make sense? It's not about, you know, uh, kissing their butts or it's not about, it's not about that. It's about office politics. It's about being strategic and it's about including other people so that you can create a harmonious work environment. Okay. And it's especially important for you to do during this Mercury retrograde period so that uh, your supervisors, people above you, they don't misunderstand you. They know you're a really hard worker and they really, really know that you're very, very competent. And I feel like they see you as a threat. So if you do things without consulting them, it can rub them the wrong way. So be careful. Second message, my way or my way. Okay, so Aquarius, um, here's the thing. You guys are really um, good-hearted people. Most of you guys are really good-hearted. And, you know, there are selfish people and generous people of every sign uh, in every country. Okay, so it, it's not about being... It's not be about being prejudiced or it's not about, you know, playing fav uh, favorites. But what I mean is, as a humanitarian sign, you guys are generally very nice. Whenever you can help people, you generally do it. Whenever you can teach people something and kind of uh, show people how smart you are, you definitely will do it. However, what you don't like is when people take it for granted or when people don't do the legwork themselves and they... Uh, kind of uh, come to you expecting you to do the work for them that sense of entitlement you hate that sense of entitlement from other people you also don't like it when people become emotionally needy like if you help them three four five six times and then they automatically expect it from you or they they become attached to you or they become emotionally needy like you don't like that and so you start to distance yourself from them. You start to kind of lose respect for them. So what we're looking at here is for you to really think about how your actions 
lead to specific outcome. If you're so eager all the time to assist somebody, it creates dependencies, right? And so you need to learn to draw back. And then at the same time, um, if you're so willing to step in and intervene and fix situations and show how much you know, the next time somebody's in a jam, they're going to run to you. And so be very careful about, you know, drawing the, the line and drawing those boundaries, okay? Um, also, what I feel here is um, many of you are in a position where you are interacting with a lot of people, a lot of people. And you're getting a little bit frustrated, mainly because people come in with their own sense of entitlement. So it's almost like, hey, I pay for these services. I gave you guys money. Why isn't it? Uh, why aren't things being streamlined? Why aren't things done based on my timeline? So it's like they're coming in with, you know, the sense of entitlement just because they have money, just because because they have power, just because they have prestige. They expect you to bend over backwards for them. And you're just like trying your hard to be diplomatic while telling them, you know, that's not how it works. It's my way or my way. So you're trying to redirect the energy. You're trying to give them kind of like a piece of your mind, but doing so in a very diplomatic way. So it's important to be crafty when you're dealing with these people because they're coming in already very, very upset. And if you kind of act in a way where you're very detached and aloof, that's really going to make them more upset. Okay, so it's important to, to, to kind of like cater to it, but at the same time, telling them, give them as much technical jargon as you can so that they understand everything is a process. They understand that, you know, you're doing things from your end, but you have to follow these procedures in order to get things done. So your communication style needs to be very, very clear and very, very succinct and try your best not to escalate the situation because I see you being very, very um, irritated when people come to you with this sense of entitlement. Okay, so you're telling them as much like my way or my way, or they're telling you as much. I want everything to be done according to my, you know, conditions just because I have this much money or I am in this position and you're, you're really not having that. But it's important to be diplomatic. It's important to follow the rules. It's important not to isolate and drive people away. And it's also important for you not to get reprimanded by your superiors. So be careful. Generally, you guys are very um, calm and collected, generally. But I feel like it's the, it's the people coming in with the sense of entitlement that really irks you. Really, really irks you. Um, the third message that I feel here is um, lightning rod. So I, I really like this analogy for you guys. Because, you know, the lightning rod basically directs lightning from the sky and it runs it back down to the earth to prevent further damage to the surrounding environment, people, property, trees, houses, whatever it might be. So it's sort of like taking one for the team. But I feel like the imagery that I'm getting here is not so much about taking one for the team. It's about you this month being that lightning rod, being the, the fixer, being the one person that takes a lot of crap from everybody else but you're able through, you know, your own um, wit and through your own craftiness and through your own aptitude and intelligence, you're able to spin a situation and turn a situation around and de-escalate and, and make the situation a lot better than it could have been. So I feel like people are going to be very, very pleasantly surprised of your skill and your diplomacy. And it's really rare that I say dis diplomacy, especially for an Aquarius rather than a Libra, but more so for an Aquarius, because the way you are, you're very true to yourself. When someone is coming to you with a bunch of BS, you can call it BS. You call it for what it is, okay? You call it by its name. And I feel like you don't mince words. You're very impatient and you don't like it when people are false. 
okay but i feel like this is the month where you know how to work a situation you know how to spin things around and you know how to like um i almost want to say what is that expression where it's like give somebody a taste of their own medicine there we go so it's like shifting the energy shifting the the impact and the hostility that is directed at you and channeling it down to the earth dissipating it making it so that it doesn't affect you and i feel like you're going to be really really proud of your capability of doing this so the my way or my way the lightning rod analogy both of these things basically means that a lot of problems are going to happen and i feel at work i feel more at work in the income sector in the career sector it's at work okay and um you're going to be just fine. You're going to navigate the situation just fine. You're going to be the one that sees everything, anticipates everything that can go wrong, and gradually you're going to fix them one by one. Your ability to navigate this energy and to you know, successfully uh, mitigate these damages, it's going to really, um, I, I want to say, like uh, set you up nicely for you to get professional recognition for you to get noticed and for others to see you as a powerful player in this organization in this team and i feel like your ability to do this is really going to help you shine it's not an easy process and it can feel very daunting and very scary and overwhelming throughout this month so it's not a walk in the park and I want you guys to channel that energy of the lightning rod. You're really strong and you know how to manipulate situations. So don't let yourself, you know, feel discouraged. At any point during this, this time, don't give up. Don't feel like, oh, this is too much. I want to just drop and, and just drop my responsibilities and just take off. So like... Quitting something, that's a no-no, okay? That's not up for debate. You rough it out, you get through it, okay? And then also uh, walking away from a situation where you feel like it's too much, I can't handle it. You can handle it. Be crafty and, you know, rely on your inner resources because you are that lightning rod. You can manipulate the energy so that it doesn't harm you, okay? And it doesn't harm other people. And realize how strong you are. And realizing as well, diplomacy is going to go a long way this month. Diplomacy is going to be your friend, okay? So I feel that these things need to be brought up so that, Aquarius, you don't lose faith. You don't give up. And you tr uh, you kind of truck on. Um, Mercury retrograde cycles basically deals with a lot of uh, situations where you know they haven't been really working and we kind of sweep them under the rug and whatever is not working that we've been sweeping under the rug they kind of implode they come out and they they rear their ugly head and they just you know need to be dealt with so i feel like all of these things that have been suppressed by other people it's coming out and you're going to have to be the one to do damage control and so it's not easy and i'm a little bit scared but you will be victorious you will be fine you will be fine um and because you're going to be doing it so successfully it takes us to the fourth message it says green-eyed devil and i feel for many of you there are jealousies coming through in the work environment people are looking at your achievements they're looking at your skill they're looking at your aptitude and they are actually very threatened by you. Very, very threatened by you. And then I'm also feeling as well, some of you, some of you might be looking at another person and you're just like, I wish I could be like that. I wish I could be that, you know, um, uh, what is the word where you think of yourself as robotic? You know, it's like, 
you get things done in a very systematic manner but the other person the person that you're just like i wish i could be like that they're not robotic they're very gregarious they're very friendly they're very spontaneous and you know you you wish you had those qualities so this green eyed devil it's it can go both ways where somebody i i definitely feel people are envious of your capabilities of the the way in which you're able to be so diplomatic and so tactful and still get your work done in a short manner like a short period of time and in a very you know uh, efficient manner so they're really jealous of your intelligence your efficiency the way that you look and the ways in which you can um, arrive at solutions in a very swift manner that is really admirable so they're going to be very jealous but I don't feel the jealousy is going to lead to any sabotage I don't feel that you're going to be doing um, they're going to be d inflicting any harm on you I also feel many of you are just like feeling a little bit inadequate because you're just like I feel like I'm a robot I feel like I'm just taking care of things in a very systematic way. I feel like I'm not really living my life. I feel like I'm not having fun. Uh, the fun will come in and I feel like this is going to be, you know, starting bright and early, the beginning of the month, there will be many opportunities for you to go out, but I don't see you going out because I see you shying away from these social interactions because you kind of feel like a robot. You kind of feel like you don't have anything to offer. You kind of feel like people will get bored of me if I keep talking. So professionally, things are going really well. Socially, you need to get a little bit more practice. You need to be a little bit more spontaneous. You need to be a little bit more, uh, it's okay to be imperfect. You need to be a little bit more human in order to I want to say blend in in your social interactions okay um opportunities for going out um i do see many of you are getting involved in some type of like physical activity yoga um hiking i'm seeing swimming for some of you so like you're getting yourself in shape you're trying to meet new people you're trying to go out you're trying to have fun you're trying to let your hair down and not take you know work so seriously you're also using it as a de-stressor to get yourself um, you know ready for the work day or just to decompress from work you're also using it as a way to lose weight for many of you and so opportunities to go out and to have fun they're ample ample opportunities uh, don't shy away from it don't feel timid don't feel scared you need to own up to the fact that you know you're just a little bit different and that's okay um, relationships another I, I feel like it's another sore spot so in the relationships ship sector um, with this green eye devil energy it's also playing out in the relationship sector where I have here those two cards one is the seven of wands and the other one is the hierophant and they're both in the reverse position the hierophant basically means learning from somebody through a very non-traditional way so they're saying teaching by unconventional means okay so many of you are with a relationship partner that is very very different from you um, I feel like you're with someone who is a little bit of a stickler for rules and regulation you're with someone who constantly 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 do things by the book and they don't really know how to think outside the box they don't know how to creatively solve problems uh, they're not like you so you're dealing with someone who is not like you they're not robotic they don't know how to arrive at solutions in you know with the click of a button and they're different from you and what I feel is happening here is yes chemistry is great but the two of you butt heads and the two of you there is an energy of dominance and control one person uh, feeling like they want to dominate the relationship or one person feels threatened by your independence in the relationship or your freedom in the relationship or you or yourself are feeling threatened that the other person might not want to settle down that the person is not you know as available as you would hope 
and once again that green eyed devil comes out where I feel like you have qualities that the other person is lacking and there are also issues with fidelity, honesty, and you know, um, are we dating each other exclusively and things like that? All of those things are coming out. And so work at your relationship. You know, um, you, you have to also understand that a lot of the times too, you know, uh, we strive for perfection. And I feel like you guys, you definitely strive for perfection. You want things to be a certain way, like based on, you know, your image or your idealistic view of what it should be in your head or in your imagination. And you try to create it in the real world. But the thing is that, you know, in the real world, we're dealing with human beings. Things can't always be perfect. And it's the imperfection that makes it human. It's the imperfection that makes it in interesting. And so don't try so hard to build a relationship with, you know, with plans and timelines. And what are we going to do if this happens? What are we going to do uh, three months from now? What are we going to do on this day? Don't obsess over it. And don't, um, I, I want to say, just take it one day at a time. And appreciate the other person's quirks and appreciate the other person's um how different they are from you i feel many of you are still in the midst of a relationship battle it's like a relationship where you're separated or you're going through a divorce and um there's a sense here let me see it's almost like I see a very strong Taurian energy coming through for this month. So Taurus, okay? I see a very strong Taurian energy. Um, and what I'm sensing here is there is still a lot of um, sexual chemistry. And I, I almost feel like because this person is just as stubborn as you are, it creates a lot of passion, a lot of chemistry. And... The chemistry is still there. And even if you know you, you might not love them, you might not like them. Whenever you see them, the chemistry is still there. But the chemistry feels really choppy. It feels really uncontrollable. And because you feel such strong chemistry, you kind of think or you suspect that you're still in love with them. And so I feel like you have some, some, some things that you've been kind of suppressing or lying to yourself about that you kind of need to get to the bottom of. So I'm not going to tell you whether or not there's love involved or whether or not it's just, you know, sexual or physical chemistry. But what I do feel overall is that don't confuse the two, okay? I feel like you're confused, confusing the two and you're confused yourself because living in your head is a lot more comfortable. Living in your body and feeling these emotions, it's a little bit more difficult for you to recognize and, and to call it by its name and to identify things and to, you know, even ask yourself how you feel about certain things. So I see a relationship where the chemistry is great. There's zero compatibility. There's zero stability, but you're confused. And so really sit down and ask yourself, you know, what do I like about this person? And the truth is, you as an Aquarius, you cannot date somebody unless you like them. You will not love somebody unless you like them, okay? So friendship and love has to go hand in hand. And you won't be friends with somebody unless they're on the same page as you, unless they believe in the same things as you. So that's going to be the start or that's going to help you to decide what you're feeling towards that person. Okay. So Aquarius, let me see if there is anything else here. Um, let me see here. So the last thing that I can say here in the work front, you have a lot of skills, Aquarius, your skills are definitely transferable. And I also feel like there is this restlessness about you. It's almost like, um, where do I fit in in the career front? Where do I fit in with work? 
And I also feel you've been in many, many, many career situation or work situation where you're disappointed by the people that you work for. So you need to have respect or you need to be, in order for you to be happy professionally, you have to res you need to be able to respect the supervisors, the boss, the people in charge. You need to respect their ethics. You need to respect their moral character in order for you to feel good about the work that you do. Okay? So it, it's not saying you need to be respectful. You guys are respectful of the chain of command and, and all of that stuff. But you need to respect the people that you work for in order for you to be happy. So if you don't for whatever reason, then you might, you know, want to change direction. Okay, so it's a good month for you to think about these things. It's a good month for you to kind of like consolidate information that you have found out about yourself or you have found out because there will be a lot of good insights coming in for you guys for this month. And you're going to start to realize as well that there, once you're unhappy with one thing, uh, you dwell on it subconsciously or consciously, and it festers and it affects all the other areas of your life. So in a way, you're kind of like that robot. If one area is not working well, you know, the whole machine crashes, right? So you're going to start to realize as well that uh, you need to be in a space where you're zen, where everything flows well. Work, home, uh, money, family, career, you know, and it's, it's the ideal situation, but it can be achieved. So you have to figure out what that, what those optimal conditions need to be for you to be okay. Okay. So I'm going to leave it at that. I hope the messages are helpful for you. And I do wish you all the best and take care of yourself. Okay. Have a blessed um, April 2018. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.